Welcome everyone. Today we're doing something a little different. We're performing a forensic financial autopsy, and our subject is a big one. Link REIT, one of the absolute giants in Asian real estate. That's right, we're going to put two critical reporting periods side by side to figure out what caused such a dramatic change in its story. It's a real financial mystery. So, let's get our gloves on and begin. So here's how our investigation is going to go. First, we'll set the scene with the tale of these two very different reports. Then the debate begins. We'll look at the bull case and the bear's rebuttal. We're going to pinpoint what we think is the smoking gun and finally deliver our verdict on what this all means. All right, let's set the stage. If you rewind to late 2023, the story everyone was telling about Link Reet was all about strength, stability, you know, a real rock in a stormy sea. But wow, fast forward just a bit and listen to how the language changes. We go from robust performance to unprecedented conditions, from resilience to grappling with structural changes. You know, that's not just a subtle shift in tone. That's a massive red flag waved by management themselves. Something big has changed. Exactly. And this chart really shows you the patient's vital signs, so to speak. You see solid growth, continued momentum. It hits a peak, and then, bam, a sharp decline. This is the mystery we're here to solve. What on earth happened? Okay, so I'll play devil's advocate and start with the bull case. Because honestly, when you look at the earlier data, you totally get why everyone called it Fortress Link. The foundations were, and I'd still say are, incredibly solid. Let me show you the evidence. First off, just look at the balance sheet. A net gearing ratio of only 18%? That is crazy low. This company isn't swimming in debt, it's the definition of financially responsible. It means they have a huge cushion to absorb pretty much any economic shock that comes their way. And check this out, their debt management was just brilliant. An average borrowing cost of 3.22%. Think about that. While interest rates were going through the roof globally, Link's management was busy locking in fixed-rate debt. That is some seriously skillful, proactive work right there. It basically saved them from soaring finance costs. And hey, you don't have to just take my word for it. The big three credit agencies, S&P, Moody's, Fitch, they all gave Link stable, A-grade ratings. That's the experts giving a big stamp of approval, confirming the company's financial health. So, let's wrap up the bull case. They raised a ton of cash to make their capital base even stronger. Their debt is spread out nice and evenly over 15 years, and their properties in key markets like Hong Kong and Singapore were basically full. This thing was built like a diversified, well-managed, unbreachable fortress. Case closed, right? Hold on, unbreachable fortress? Okay, I'll give you that the balance sheet looks fantastic. It's a work of art. But a fortress is only as good as the kingdom it protects. And when you look closer, the kingdom inside is starting to have some serious problems. Let's talk about the cracks that are starting to show. So this is the big question for you. If the fortress is so secure, and management did this amazing job keeping borrowing costs down, then why did the actual cash paid out to investors, you know, the entire reason you own a REIT, go down? And boom, here's the first major crack. Distribution per unit, or DPU, dropped almost 6%. Now remember, that big rights issue, while good for the balance sheet, created a lot more units. So the profit pie was suddenly being cut into more slices. A falling DPU tells me the core business just isn't making enough money to keep up. The fancy financial work is impressive, but it can't hide a problem in the actual operation. And it looks like the market agrees with me. The value of their entire property portfolio got written down by 6.6%. A drop like that means the market is betting that future earnings are going to be weaker. So yeah, the fortress walls might be strong, but the land inside is losing value. And all of this brings us to the cause of death in our autopsy. The real reason everything is going down isn't some complex financial metric. It's actually a really simple, fundamental business problem. Link REIT is losing its ability to set prices. And right here, this is the smoking gun. This table shows something called rental reversion. It's basically what happens to the rent when a tenant's lease is up for renewal. Look at Hong Kong retail. It went from a healthy positive 8.7%, meaning they were raising rents, to negative 2.2%. They're cutting rents now. And mainland China, it went from bad to an absolute disaster, dropping from negative 5% to negative 16.4%. Their power to charge more has just vanished. And this isn't just me saying it. This is a direct quote from the company's own report. Management is telling you, in their own words, that the rental levels achievable are reducing. They know their pricing power is gone. 
This isn't just a bad quarter, it's a deep, structural problem. Okay, looking at all the evidence, I think it's time to deliver our verdict. We've got to figure out how to reconcile this super strong balance sheet with an operation that's clearly struggling. Yeah, I think we've actually landed on the same page. The whole story of the company has changed. All right, I'll stand by my point. The fortress holds. That's a huge green flag. The balance sheet is solid, the debt is low. That gives them a foundation of stability you just can't ignore. I agree the fortress itself is safe, but the engine inside that fortress has broken down. The core business, the ability to raise rents, is gone, and that's a massive red flag. The growth story that everyone bought into for years, it's over. The company is no longer playing offense, it's playing defense. Which really just leaves us with one final, lingering question. Linkreed spent years building the perfect fortress for a battle centered around growth and expansion. But the battle isn't about growth anymore. Now it's about survival. It's about defending what you have in a much tougher market. And you have to wonder, is the fortress they built still the right one for the war they find themselves fighting today? And that's the question every investor now has to answer.